Alright, here we go. Full on volley. Oh, it crumbled it. Oh, it crumbled it. What is going on again, Nerd Paraders? Thank you guys so much for coming back to hang out with me today. We're playing some more Atlas, and we're back at Pirate Disneyland because the creative pirate juices have been flowing, and we've got a bit of a new ship design that we're interested in trying out. I'm affectionately nicknaming it the Lockpick, also the Three-Hole Punch because of the way it's designed, but we're going to be showing off not only the Three-Hole Punch slash Lockpick, but some ship-to-shore science for base rating in Atlas. And most of that science is going to focus around stone base versus ship cannons. Now, since there isn't really a way to fire mortars off of ships, I feel like the biggest way of ship-to-shore or ocean-to-land rating is going to be via cannons. Large cannons, regular cannons, and we're going to test a lot of that explosiveness today. When bases are creatively built and more inland, that's when mortars are going to come into play and some carts with some animals pulling them is going to be also a lot of fun to test out. But we're not focusing on that one just yet. We're going to be focusing on some more shippy stuff because pirates, man. Welcome to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for coming to hang. I am Nick. This is Nerd Parade, and let's kick this off. Let's stop our dancing, get out of K-Mode, and check out Piece of Ship, as well as our little crash course here. Now, I've tested this out a little bit, which has helped me come up with the design and I gotta tell you, one of the things that I love the most about Atlas is coming up with, like, creative ship designs and stuff. But this has... One thing has led to another, and we're gonna show you the pirate process that has brought us to Three-Hole Punch, a.k.a. the lock pick. Because it can pick any lock with explosive cannonballs. We're gonna head over here to the ladder boss and see if I can defeat it in one try on piece of ship. Cross your fingers. Here we go. Ladder boss! Oh, yeah, we beat him. We beat that bastard one try. First attempt. Feels good. We're going to head over here to our cannon. Now, this is just a regular cannon. Uh, scrapped in the smithy, default, no blueprint, nothing like that, as well as the large cannon down here. But this is just the base of base. These are also common stone structures. The base of base, and that's what we're testing this stuff on. Now, I've got a couple of things set up here. And you're probably thinking, why is it set up like this? Don't worry, I'm going to talk about it as we fire things at it and explode the shit out of it. But we've also got this guy over here. So, this is for distance testing. Does damage increase or decrease due to cannonball travel time? And I'm going to show you what that is. I already know the answer, but we're going to show you so that you could follow the path, the, the thought process that brought us to the three-hole puncher. So I'm going to pop in here, and we're going to reload since we've already emptied our balls out of this tube. We're going to fire one at a wall. Okay. We're going to fire one at... Actually, probably don't need to hit this wall again because we're going to test the distance with that one. We're going to fire it at this foundation. Okay, we're going to reload and fire a third one at this guy. Now, it should not splash damage. I have te I tested this before. It didn't. So that should not have actually splash damaged anything. I'll verify to make sure that it didn't. We're going to reload this guy. And we're going to test, does distance play a factor in boom booms? Okay. Ooh. Now we go check our stuff. So the first one that we shot a ball at is this guy right here. Oh, I didn't think of this, but this guy is actually... Er, 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 er. This guy is actually a fine cannon, I believe. It won't make that much of a difference, but... Yeah, I'm... yep, he's a fine one. I saw it for a second. This one is 8774. 8774 is what this hit on this stone wall here. That is uh, roughly around, I'd say, 12... Yeah, it's about 1,200 damage from a regular cannon... 1,200 damage on a stone wall structure. Here, get things get a little interesting. This is about 1,100 damage on a stone floor, but if you'll take a look at it, the stone floor is weaker. You might notice that it's 5,000 health when it's normally placed by itself, 10,000. So when you start stacking... 10,000? 5,000. When you start stacking stone foundations, thinking that you're getting a more reinforced base that way, you're actually not. Stone walls attached to one singular foundation is better. So if, you, if you're if you kind of like figuring this out right now, this is kind of the purpose. So if you see this, if you see this, target it. It's a weakness. It's a weakness in the base. We're going to head over here. Do, 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 do. 
And this one should be 8893. I'm gonna actually get a regular cannon and we're gonna redo this. All right, here we go. Ready to repair. Boop. We're repairing this guy from our inventory, some of the stuff that we broke. And I went ahead and placed down a regular cannon that we grabbed back from our little kit out area. So we're gonna get back to the ladder boss. Can we defeat him in one try? We can. Oh, we're getting really good at the ladder boss, I gotta say. That's pretty good stuff. Just not getting good at the navigating the ship box. Box? Yeah, ship box. Now we have a fine, I'm sorry, a regular cannon as opposed to a fine one. And if we're, you'll remember the number was 8893 with our fine one. I want the results to be absolutely as accurate as possible. So for science, we replace this one with a common. Boom. If you'll remember the numbers were 8893 on that guy. Jum, 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 jum. And you'll see that it's weaker. Much weaker. Distance plays a role. This was normal. 8774. 8936. 70 damage. Like nothing. Distance plays a huge role on how much damage your cannon will do offshore or shore to base. So it's going to make these turds a lot more viable. So what I've done here is I placed a couple of things. Now with the cannon, I'm going to have to rebuild, but that's fine. So we have our regular stacked 5,000s. And you'll see that this cannon, I'd say it's relatively the same distance. I tried to, tried to measure it out. It's relatively the same distance, maybe about two or three foundations. About two or three foundations. So it should be the same as that guy to this, or this one here. So we're looking at about 1,100 damage. Does the large cannon pack more of a punch than 1,100 damage to make it worthwhile? Reload, and let's find out. Oh, the suspense is building while the balls are going into this tube. Let's wiggle a little. Okay, we're gonna hit, let's hit the top one. We hit the top one last time, let's hit the top one here. Boom! Big reveal, almost big reveal. Almost half. 2,025 damage. It's, Pound for pound, it's not exactly double, but it does do five, like 500 more damage to a structure. What I'm gonna do now is I need to get another one, is I want it, I don't have the room here. Can I stack these? Yeah, I probably can. Actually, I might be able to pull this off. Uh, let's try here. Foundations are making me look bad. What I'm gonna try to do is lay another cannon, like so. I gotta go get one though from over there. And we're gonna blast this guy to see how much the damage translates for distance. And that's where it's gonna come into play. Spoiler alert. All right, I've got our secondary large cannon down here for science purposes. We're gonna mount him, we're gonna reload him, and I destroyed the wall over there and put this one foundation back just to give it a little bit more distance to it because we are slightly closer than that guy. A couple of foundations, but just to show it off for science purposes, we built one foundation here and one out. If you remember, the other one was right there. We destroyed it. We're going to hit that side. And let's do this for glory. Uh, no. And science. And mostly blowing shit up. Zip. Okay. Can we do more than set? Really? <laughs> Can't get across. The Can we do more than 75 damage at a distance? Why, yes. Yes, we can. Quite a huge amount. Still around 2,000. The distance does not seem to be as punishing with the large cannons on base rating. So our broadsider design that we have, well, that's one of the schooners, but our broadsider design doesn't hold up over long distances because they're all normal cannons. Ship to ship, it's fantastic. But at base attacking, not so much. What, what is the answer to that? The majesty? Of the three-hole punch, a.k.a. the lockpick. Now, this guy is a brigantine, and he's very simplistically designed on purpose. We try to use our tiered structures on all of our boats just to make them a little more sturdy, but this guy doesn't have a whole lot to him. Obviously, he's still level one because I haven't taken him out of the dry dock, but he's more or less complete. He's fully manned. There will be no more crew needed. At level one, you have enough crew that you need. The only thing you should be pumping your levels into is weight, or you could even go 
uh, let's say, accommodations if you'd like to reduce the amount of cost that your crew is taking. But weight is going to play a huge factor here because you're going to want to be moving a lot of balls. I know, jokes, just pirate things, but we are designing this ship with a very specific method, a best, very spe specific purpose in mind. Now, this ship taken out by itself is going to be extraordinarily weak. It's got a ton of open spots that anybody can blast through. This guy's one mission, one design, is ship-to-shore raiding, specifically base raiding and punching holes. That's what we call it, the, the, AKA, the three-hole punch, a.k.a. the lockpick, because it can lockpick in its way into any base by pinpointing any type of structure with the vertical movement of the cannon. Now, the cannons are angled to kind of hit in sort of like a reverse cone directly in front of it. We did the directly in front because because, because we thought it would be the easiest to manipulate and maneuver in the heat of battle. Don't take this guy out in the beginning. Weaken the enemy forces, destroy their ships before you bring this guy as close to the base as possible and then pummel your way into it. That's why this guy is designed. Three hole punch, the nickname came from the three cannons being on each level. We have four levels, all completely manned at level one, with 16 crew, and everything at this point will be into weight or accommodations to make this, the boat faster. As you can see currently up at the top right-hand corner, the weight's decent, but not great. I've got two weight sails, one speed sail, because we're not worrying about traversing the ocean as fast as possible. This guy is a base raider. And that's what we want from it. So we're going to take him out. Not very smart on my part to take him out solo. But we're going to slow and steady this guy. We're going to try to knock out a couple of ships of the damned. Just like we did with the rum dumpster. Because if you've seen episodes before, the rum dumpster is designed very similar to this. Except it's way more effective at destroying ships than it would be at bases. We just want this guy to be beefy enough in the weight category to carry as many large balls as it can. Just things pirates would say. Let's deploy it. Okay, we're going to release this ship. And we're going to name him Three-Hole Punch or Lockpick. I like Three-Hole Punch. We can name him Three-Hole Punch, aka its nickname can be the Lockpick. Three-Hole... We'll call it Puncher. Three-Hole Puncher. Done. Boy, this is going to be dumb. I really should go out with an escort. With an escort. But, uh... My crew not be online, so we're going to try to do this by myself. And we're going to take it slow and steady. Only low-level ships of the damned are the ones we're going after. Okay, great. This is going to be awesome. So the first thing I encounter is a yellow ship of the damned. And I'm not terrified at all. I'm dropping sails as fast as I can. Oh, I got my first level just by sailing. I'm going to let this guy come to me as much as he can. Oh, this has got to be careful. I'm going, I'm going to go take this super slow. Our Hulk lighthouse is off in the distance, kind of signaling me to stay the F away. Real slow, real cut sails back, real, real slow. Just angle it. We chose Brigantine because the amount of crew, 16, was all that we really needed for this type of design. And it's going to be more maneuverable than a galleon. Maneuverability is going to be very, very important for this type of ship. Because you want you want that type of pinpoint accuracy. Come at me, bro. What? Too early! Too early, you turds! Maybe not too early. Oh yeah, definitely too early. Damn you, turds! You're wasting my balls! Oh, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it! Not even one hit. Okay, that was kind of a good volley. Hit those volleys. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, that's actually hitting, though. Cut it, let it come to me. For levels, and glory, and pirate stuff. Fire all the things. No, 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 no! Oh, it says he's not taking damage. 17, oh shit. That was good. Fire, 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 fire. Oh, I'm gonna have to do me some repair. My dinghy? I didn't have a dinghy! Oh, he hit me. Fire. Please fire. Fire at will. Why are you not firing? I said fire at will, damn you. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is real bad. Open sails. Going out of the wind. Going out of the wind. Going out of the wind. Ho, ho, ho. 
I knew this was a bad choice! Oh, the fog is settling in. He's right off there in the distance. You can barely make him out, but we're going to make another pass at this. We've run away so that we can pirate another day. We're going to give ourselves just a little bit of wind, but I'm going to cut my sails and take it real, real slow. Oh, I see him. He's, I see him in the fog. This is actually really creepy. I should be lined. Oh, yep, yeah, I'm lined up. Come at me, though. Oh, no, don't fire yet. Unless you can hit him, then fire all you want. Oh, my, I'm actually hitting him. Oh, no, I'm taking down. I'm taking damage. Unleash everything, Ben. Fire the main guns. Reload faster. Boom. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. Oh, okay. okay. Taking this out by myself was a scary, scary choice. Definitely scary. I'm taking them right back. I'm going to get them repaired. I'm glad we could do it, but yikes. Okay, so 19 levels on that. Additional weight is going to be great. <laughs> Rhyming is on point. For our speed. I want... I might just, you know, I might just put them all into here. Sturdiness is probably a good idea. Yeah, that's fine. 3,800. We're going to end up stump, dumping more weight points anyway. Uh, what's our ball situation look like? How many did I end up going through? About 40. Went through about 40 balls. Let's get my sails some wind here. And let's get back to Pirate Disneyland. I think I might have lost one of me crews. I lost one of me crews in the madness. I can't see shit. All right, well, we've got this guy home docked. Not repaired yet, but sure, you can take out a ship of the damned. But you're talking about this guy blowing into stone structures and bases. So let's do some of that. Now, I took us back to our little testing area. And we're going to unleash holy hell on these tiny little guys right here if my guys will fire at them. Okay, there it goes. Boom, 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 boom. There's one volley. Let's do uh, maybe another volley here. Okay, one volley. <laughs> one volley for the volley, and it really missed. Reload faster, you turds. Right, they're reloading. And we're going to fire all the things at them. Oh, there we go. That's, oh, God. All right, there we go. Get me some balls lined up here. Let's get right about like so. That's a good little blast there. So as you can see, it's like kind of in a... Like in a line that would just annihilate most of bases. And let's see what we did. We fired... Two rounds of volleys, so we should be looking at something like maybe, I would assume, 2,000-ish damage to most of those structures. Roughly. Oh, that one's almost busted. That was one I didn't target earlier. Ooh, that did a lot more than I thought. That was at full, because I didn't target that with anything earlier. Uh, These guys didn't get touched so much. Wow, it really kind of pinpointed this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing that. I'm going to go back and fire the rest of this shit. We're going to fire all the things. Fire all the things! All right, here we go, full on volley. Oh, it crumbled it. Oh, it crumbled it. Nice. Oh, I'm really excited to see these guys in some actual base rating action. The cannon placement on my end might have been a little off, but I feel like if you take the time to really get them lined up, you can get some serious reverse cone action and pinpoint the shit out of some bases. Ship to shore combat might be redesigned for the Nerd Parade crew and the Nerd Parade company. A, one of these did a pretty decent job. Three or four of these brought in after you've destroyed the harbor of an enemy structure or an enemy base could be devastating. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the three-hole punch, aka the lock picker. And let me know if you plan to use something like this for yourself when you go out raiding in the most piratey fashion possible. But I want you guys to remember to take care of yourselves out there. If you liked the video, smash the thumbs up button for me. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the page for some more cool Atlas fun. Or don't. Who the fuck cares? What do I know? But remember, like I said, take care of yourselves, stay awesome, and we'll catch you in the next piratey adventure on the high scenes. <laughs> Later.